Well, how old were you when you joined the girls, you know, the Nola's group full-time? Um, it was... I was 15 oh. when I joined them full-time. And then just before that, from about 13 to 15, I was in a real quandary where I thought, I don't know if I want to. You know, I think because I'd been singing since I was two, I kind of was craving just this normality of just getting a proper job. <laughs> I'd always said I wanted to be a vet. Um, then I looked into the qualifications, realised I didn't have a hope in hell. <laughs> and, um, but, I, you know, I was mad about horses, so I, I, my dad was like, I always see you marrying a farmer. You'd be really happy on a farm, you know. I think he was trying to get rid of me. But, um, <laughs> uh, but, I, but then when it came to it, and the moment came, and Anne was leaving at that point because she'd just got pregnant with her first child and she was going to take two years out. So that was the kind of best opportunity for me then to join. And as Terry Wogan used to say, they've got a Nolan factory and when one leaves, they just churn out <laughs> another one, you know. <laughs> and um, so that was the moment. I joined at 15 and then, of course, from, uh, went straight to Japan, mm -hmm. you know, so... Well, what, from <clears> the moment you joined, though, you mm -hmm. said goodbye to your childhood, didn't you? Yeah, I did, really, but then I'd, I'd had a very... I'd had a very weird childhood anyway. I mean, there was times when I was really young when, yeah. you know, I wanted to join, I've said before loads of times, I wanted to join the Brownies and I couldn't because yes. we were working at a working men's club in Scotland somewhere. Um, so I'd never had a conventional childhood, but my teenage years were, I mean, I didn't... I, I sound really, really ungrateful because I go, I didn't really have teenagers. I travel the world as a teenager. Well, you mentioned, which is you more mentioned than... Japan there. Yeah. I mean, we always tease, Colin, we always tease, Colin, <laughs> huge in Japan. But you really, the yes, Nolans were you, huge in Japan. <laughs> so we we knew that our records had been released over there, you know, I'm the Mufa Dan Simley in the first one, and they were saying, oh, it's 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 gone massive mm. in Japan, you need to go over and promote the album. And we just thought it'd be like here, you know, it'd be like, oh, that's great. Then they said it was number one, which we hadn't had here. And Wow, we're number one in Japan. We had no idea that when we got to Japan, from being here and being able to walk down the street and go on public, you know, and people would say hello, you know, it'd be all lovely. From the moment we arrived in Japan, it was, it was the equivalent. Think of One Direction or something here, where they go. Nuts. We literally got off the plane and there was hundreds of thousands of people there going. Nuts. I thought there was someone else on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and we, we got there and we had to be escorted everywhere by the army because we weren't allowed to walk down the streets on our own. Wow. It was one of them where we'd do our... Con we did... They work you so hard and we did, like, 28 shows in 26 days. Wow. And during the day, it was promotion all day. Mm. And um, straight off the stage into a car. You know, like you see in the films? And it was like we had to run off the stage into a car, otherwise we'd never get out of the building. And it was, it was all very exciting. And even then, though, Janet, I was the one there going, I just want to go home. Because yeah. <laughs> I was 15, I wanted yeah. to go home and just be 15 at times. And, you know, I'd get in touch with my mates and they'd all be going out somewhere. And I'd well, think... when I was reading all the in-depth research on you earlier mm. today, I noticed that when you started having boyfriends, because you never saw anyone outside ba the band, the first two serious boyfriends you had... Were in the were band. Were in the band. To be honest with you, Janet, I was trying to make up an orchestra for myself. <laughs> um, I think eventually I was just missing a bass player. Mm. Because, uh, you know. But, yes, all my relationships were to do with the musicians, you know, my first, very first love, obviously, with our yeah. keyboard player and, you know, yeah, it was always... Because, they, like you said, they were the only people I was ever with, yeah. really. But the other loves of your life are mm. your children. We yes. know that. Yes. And you talk about them all the time. Mm. We talk about them, we, we know them. And, um, and they couldn't let today go past without a little message. Stop so it. This oh. is from... Well, it's one, it's one of them. It's Shane. It's your love Oh, he's going to be rude. <laughs> Hi, Mum. It's your uh, oldest, best-looking child here, Shane. Uh, I just want to say how great I think you are as a mother and um, how loose women... I think it's probably made you become a better mother because um, you get help <laughs> off the other ladies. <laughs> but, uh, honestly, I, I couldn't think of a better friend or better mum who's done been there and done everything for us. I think you're amazing. Yeah. I, just, I just want to say, I love listening to you and the way you talk about your kids. It, it absolutely moves me every single mm. time. What I wanted to know is how they're, they're following in your footsteps. Uh, they're, they're all musical, <clears throat> they've got musical talents yeah. themselves. Is that something that 
they grew up around or something that you've pushed them to or something Well, yeah, I mean, we naturally... were talking about this earlier, weren't we? It, it is quite strange how they... No, I've never pushed them to do it. They've just, I guess, grown up with a singing family and, and they can just sing. You know, I don't, I don't know how that happens. It must be genetic. But I'm so, so proud of Well, listen, them. as... as Well, they're proud of you, we know that. Um, and as we said, you are huge in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm huge everywhere. Huge in Japan. Oh, Holly. Oh, we were don't talking, sick, early, we were talking earlier about you being single, but of course you don't need to be single because don't forget this. You've had a proposal. Don't forget this. Look. Colleen, we've got a message for you. This is one of your oldest, most loyal fans, Akira. What do you want to say to Colleen? Hello, Colleen. I love you. I always love you. Will me, will me. He loves you. He proposed to I you. Know. Uh, now you think he's in Japan today? Don't, don't. <laughs> don't do this he to is, me. He is in Japan. Oh today. my god! <laughs> oh my god! I'm literally having the hottest flush ever. I've got, I've got to do that. Oh, for I you. can't see him before I've got the wedding. To do that for you. <laughs> um, just we've got about 15 seconds. Yes. Um, how much do you love being a loose woman? Loose Woman has become my whole life and I've loved every single, you know, every moment of it, good or bad, because of all of you. Well, we love her too, Aww. don't we? <laughs>